This is Charles Armstrong. I'd like to welcome you to Armstrong and take you on a journey of our company's history. With over 80 years of industry experience, we are proud to share our family and company history with you. In the 1930s, my grandfather, Samuel Allen Armstrong, had a vision to establish a design and engineering company in Canada with the belief that quality and service to the customer are the underlying values that foster lasting success. It is a commitment that set a standard from the beginning and has continued to guide Armstrong today and will into the future. Much is written about sustainability today. However, I find it informative that Alan Armstrong had the same idea in 1932. His and our service value is service to the world who by reason of such service will become our customer. So service, in his words, requires making contribution to the greater good, not only serving the customer that has become the norm. This is the golden thread that has sustained us from 1932 to present day and will continue to reflect the DNA of Armstrong as it grows in the future. By 1934, S.A. Armstrong Limited was producing its first offering of steam and boiler feed products in a small facility in downtown Toronto. Armstrong soon expanded into heating systems for domestic installations and materials handling equipment. Facing the adversity of a serious depression, Armstrong grew slowly but surely. Reminiscing, my grandfather would smile when he told people that three circulating pumps per week was big production in those days. With a handful of staff, a few machines and much determination, Armstrong grew under the dynamic leadership of Allen and the determined cooperation of his staff. Armstrong's first products were confined to manufacturing steam and boiler feed products. However, production grew to include a variety of heaters, coolers, and engineering specialties for industrial, commercial, and domestic purposes. Manufacturing with Canadian rights to various pump products allowed Armstrong to improve in a fast-growing market. It allowed us to build in quality assurance and processes that would set the standard for excellence in the future. Quality and service were the values that every employee understood and practiced. The Armstrong sales force became an expert in their field. They worked to develop long-lasting relationships with customers to such an extent that they were considered a partner in the enterprise. The trademark, hallmark of quality, was proudly adopted as the company symbol. Armstrong employees were proud to be associated with a company that was so highly respected and customers noted that pride of association. Community is one of our core values. At Armstrong, we know that you can't build strong and lasting community with customers, suppliers, and our technical and social communities unless one has mastered building the trust and collaboration capabilities in the company. Further, our diversity in our organization is also our greatest strength. During the Second World War, Armstrong produced specialized war work, such as producing lift trucks, constructed out of bronze for use in munitions factories. By the 1950s, Armstrong employees numbered over 100, occupying a much larger building in the east end of Toronto on O'Connor Drive. The additional space allowed an increase in design engineering staff and better service to our customer base. In 1950, Alan Armstrong died, and his assistant, Miss Beach, stepped in to run all aspects of the business. She was apparently a marvelous lady, but quite demanding and certainly well ahead of her time. In 1952, my father, James Allen Carey Armstrong, succeeded my grandfather as president. He began to institute bold initiatives across the spectrum of Armstrong activities that set the course for the next 30 years. He correctly read the business landscape and initiated our drive to serve international markets. Secondly, he grasped the need to make pumps easier and more cost-effective to maintain. He is responsible for introducing vertical pumping by way of the vertical inline 4300 for HEVAC applications. This product innovation has made a significant contribution to our customers and Armstrong has led the market globally with its introduction in all markets we sell to. Competitors have now and will continue to follow our lead in this technology. 
Our 1954 plant expansion on O'Connor Drive permitted us to accommodate our expanding customer demand for heat transfer and refrigeration equipment for Canada's growing buildings and industrial processes. In 1958, Armstrong became the largest manufacturer of centrifugal pumps in Canada. In that period of time, the company did all the design and system layouts for engineering firms and end customers and won projects based on our deep knowledge of heat transfer and fluid technology. In the early 60s, Armstrong fostered its own research and development department, developing portable elevators and a new jet pump water system series which complemented the line of general purpose pumps. Armstrong invested heavily in new designs, always attempting to add new value to the product based on our customer requirements. As we evolved our product design capability, it was never directed at being just the same as the competition. That is why today, Armstrong Innovations lead the market on a number of fronts. With extreme determination, intuition and insight, Jim Armstrong set up operations and manufacturing in the United Kingdom and a year later in the United States. No small feat for a small Canadian company. He knew that having a global vision was essential to sustained company growth, to which others can attest he had a very healthy appetite. Jim Armstrong sits at the bottom left of this picture. This was the first national training and learning meeting held in Toronto in 1962. Learning and innovation are important values for Armstrong to embrace. Learning is mostly a social activity built on strong trust between participants. Innovation can really only be built out of learning, and that is why the two are closely related and important to Armstrong. By 1969, Jim had assembled a team of knowledgeable process design engineers, and the Armstrong vertical inline was being developed in preparation for its launch in 1970. With the advent of computer technology, it was possible to grow the coverage of the vertical pump into all our applications. Today, on every continent, every major competitor is embracing the design pioneered by Armstrong in the 70s, all driven by service, community, and innovation and learning. In the early 70s, Armstrong expanded the vertical inline offering through most size ranges used in the HEVAC market, thereby replacing old base-mounted designs. Installed cost was always important, and in conjunction with the vertical inline developments, we developed suction guides and Flowtrex triple duty valves to complement the pump and make it an easier, more economical, and reliable product to install and operate. By the end of the 70s, Armstrong was initiating its education of the North American market in how to improve energy efficiency of fluid systems by using high precision circuit balancing valves. By looking beyond the pumps and heat exchangers and really understanding the full heat transfer and fluid flow circuit, Armstrong built a capability beyond just selling pumps. This was the start of integrated thinking, looking at total system performance and helping our customer design for improved results. In 1987, Armstrong moved into a 130,000 square foot state-of-the-art plant at 23 Bertrand Avenue in Toronto, which today serves as our corporate headquarters. We were certainly proud to have successfully expanded internationally and the success of our innovations accepted by the market. Now we needed a place to expand our design and manufacturing capabilities to tackle even larger global markets. In the 1990s, Leadership passed to the third generation of Armstrongs. Jim and I were appointed to chief operating positions, having spent many years in various roles in the company. We set out to lay in the information technology backbone and focused factories, which would create a strong international network, enabling a platform of collaboration internationally. Innovations proceeded on many fronts, launching new inventions in heat transfer products, dual arm vertical inline, true parallel pumping, expansion equipment, fire products, and the seed of design envelope products, the world's first intelligent IVS pump. In the 1990s, Armstrong acquired Darling Juro, a Montreal-based manufacturer of fire pumps, and Northwest Switchgear, our fire panel builder. 
bringing fire systems into Armstrong's group of competencies and the incorporation of Armstrong Darling Inc. in Quebec, Canada. In 2004, Armstrong combined its UK operation with a 150-year-old UK pump company, Holdenbrook Pullen, and a plant integration specialist and systems builder, Plant Energy Systems, to create a full-service entity now operating as Armstrong Integrated Limited. Our global 50-cycle and 60-cycle product offerings were now complete for the first time. In 2007, the IVS sensorless pump, which had been pioneered in the UK since the year 2000 in a limited offering, was expanded to 450 horsepower and 50 and 60 cycles, making intelligent pumps widely available and more economical. These pumps integrate Armstrong's demand-based control with variable frequency drives, yielding 65% savings in energy. Again, this Armstrong innovation is leading the direction of digitally enabled pumping, a game changer for the industry. In 2007, we became committed to the Indian market by establishing a full manufacturing and sales operation in Bangalore. In 2010, this was complemented by building a new clean, state-of-the-art, non-ferrous foundry. In 2010, Armstrong opened a plant in Shanghai, China with full production and testing capabilities. The following year, sales offices were opened in Lyon, inaugurating Armstrong's presence in France. By 2009, Armstrong had about 10 years of practice in the application of two technologies, demand-based control and variable frequency drives. Our practice led us to understand that engineering application practice had to change to optimize and leverage these combined technologies. The watershed moment was the development and launch of Design Envelope, a design methodology which consistently yields significantly lower installed cost, life cost, and energy costs. Additionally, this methodology reduces project risks across all stages of a mechanical room development, design, installation, and operation. Armstrong's design envelope methodology has now expanded across all fluid flow systems and will continue to be the technology we lead the market with now and in the future. In 2011, Lex Vanderver joined Armstrong to serve as the company's first chief executive officer, taking up the challenge of driving the formulation and execution of a global strategy. As with Alan Armstrong, Today's Armstrong leadership understands that the key reason for continued success can be found in quality and the company's DNA values of service, community, innovation, and learning. That dedication has been a part of Armstrong's corporate culture since the beginning and is still as strong today. This is augmented by innovations in customer service, technology, and manufacturing to ensure Armstrong's products offer even greater value, quality, and durability to the world. Over the course of Armstrong's history, we've become a global organization. We've become a multifaceted, customer-focused business. And above all, we've embarked on a journey that allows our expertise in producing fluid flow products to carry over into the engineering and support of intelligent building energy technologies. The results are energy applications that make sense, technically, financially, and environmentally, which make our customers' lives easier. Where we stand today would not have been possible without the nearly 80 years of growing expertise and dedication of our employee community. Armstrong's past is an intrinsic part of our present and future. Today we serve customers on most continents, the original commitments are unchanged, that creating customer experiences second to none is part of a long-standing family tradition. Alan Armstrong's original value statement, service to the world, who by reason of such service will become our customer, is clearly fundamental to our sustainable future.